Hello and welcome to the programme. I'm Sami Zaydan. Well, calls for an immediate ceasefire from the UN and Arab League special envoy Kofi Annan appear to be failing. As a Syrian official announced, the army will not pull out its troops from towns and cities. Well, this comes despite a warning from Turkey that this is Syria's, quote, last chance before facing what it calls strong measures. Well, the Turkish foreign minister made the statement in Istanbul as it prepares to host 60 world leaders in the latest round of the Friends of Syria summit. But even with mounting pressure on the Syrian government, as Jonah Hull now reports, there's no indication they'll be able to stop the violence. It's broadcasting as usual on Syrian state TV. Weapons said to have been confiscated from opposition fighters, but no sign of violence as a foreign ministry spokesman is quoted saying the battle to topple the state is over. The battle now, he says, is to secure stability. This is new video posted by activists on YouTube. It can't be verified, but nor is tank fire in an urban center easily staged. The central city of Homs is still the focus of a government army campaign to subdue the opposition. Reports suggest it is by no means the only city under fire. Over the past few minutes, more than 20 artillery shells and rockets have fallen. They are targeting residential areas. May God save innocent civilians. May God help us. May God doom Bashar and his followers. They're targeting residential areas, women and children. The Muslim and Arab worlds are silent. If this is an effort to secure stability, there's a long way to go. Away from the bloodshed, diplomacy continues. The Arab League has called for dialogue in Syria. It no longer demands that President Bashar al-Assad step down. On Sunday, 60 nations will gather in Turkey in support of Syria's still divided opposition. And the U.S. Secretary of State is in Saudi Arabia. Saudi calls to arm the opposition fighters have not been widely supported. Not yet. And not as long as UN and Arab League envoy Kofi Annan's peace plan offers a glimmer of hope. That's the minimum. What uh, the regime must do and must do urgently without any delay. But if that delay continues, and if people are being killed every day, more and more casualties being uh, on the agenda, uh, in news, of course, the hope for Annan plan will be lost. Assad has promised to spare no effort in supporting the peace plan. This video, allegedly from the outskirts of the capital itself, suggests government forces have not yet been ordered to stand down. Jonah Hull, Al Jazeera. Well, for more on this, I'm joined by our three guests from Istanbul. Ilter Turan, Professor of Political Science in the International Relations Department of Bilgi University. From Moscow, Roman Dobrokhotov, a political analyst and writer for the news website Slon.ru. And again from Istanbul, Mohammed Bassam Emadi, a Syrian National Council member in the Foreign Relations Committee. Before that, Mr. Emadi was Syria's ambassador to Sweden. Thanks for joining us. If I could start with uh, Mr. Ilter. Do you think Kofi Annan's initiative can now be declared as a failure or at least say that it's failing? It is not considered successful at least uh, because it was predicated on the assumption that the Syrian regime would live up to its commitments. Now the regime had not lived up to its commitments earlier and there was no reason to think that this would be so on this particular uh, effort in this particular effort and I guess it's not working out. All right, that's an interesting point. I'd like to take uh, that uh, point to uh, Roman in Moscow. Moscow, of course, uh, backed this plan as a possible avenue out of this mess, this crisis. It doesn't seem to be working, though. Let me put the question to you that Ilta raised there. Why did we think this plan would work when, in many ways, it's very similar to the Arab League plan that didn't work either, did it? Well, uh, I don't think that uh, that is the question of whether uh, Kofi Annan is a good negotiator or not. That is the question of um, what um, benefits for uh, Russia is waiting Vladimir Putin, because 
as we um, uh, understand, he uh, often uh, supports uh, rock states, especially those rock states uh, which oppose um, uh, the USA, because on the one hand, it gives opportunity to um, have uh, exclusive opportunity to sell weapons to this country. Uh, on, the, on, the, on the other hand, it gives uh, opportunity to uh, ask for some benefits for switching this position in um, so it's United a bargaining Nations chip. Is that Council? what this is you're saying to Vladimir Putin and we shouldn't forget also uh, Medvedev? Well, uh, I, would, I, would, I would speak rather about uh, Vladimir Putin because even uh, when <coughs> uh, uh, Dmitry Medvedev became elected president, uh, we know that uh, the most important decisions in uh, foreign affairs were made by Vladimir Putin. For example, after uh, Dmitry Medvedev supported a resolution on uh, Libya. We uh, know uh, how Vladimir Putin criticized him, and uh, soon after that, official uh, Russian position uh, um, considering this uh, resolution also quickly changed. So, All right. yeah. uh, I think that uh, comment has been made yeah. before, but that's a whole nother ball game, isn't it? Let's uh, take the question to uh, Mohammed, of course, as a representative of the Syrian opposition. Is the ball now in the court of the Syrian opposition since the Bashar no. al Assad regime says, we agree to the plan? Just get those opposition guys to agree to it too. <laughs> Well, he has not agreed at all. I mean, uh, everybody knows that Assad is maneuvering. This thing has been said by the Prime Minister of Qatar. He said, stop maneuvering. That was a long time ago, but it seems Assad is not learning. Well, he's, he's agreed to it verbally, see, though, uh, hasn't he? Isn't it the opposition's well, turn then to he say, said, OK, we'll sign up to and we'll stop fighting? Well, we, the opposition welcomed the initiative, although you have to notice that the uh, plan was not uh, really similar to the Arab plan because uh, one major factor was missing from there. You know, the Arab plan uh, demanded the, uh, that the president uh, gives his or uh, delegates his authorities to his deputy. Now, in, in Anan plan, there is nothing like that at all. Uh, therefore, uh, still, Assad doesn't want to accept it. He verbally, as you said, as you rightly said, accepted it, but uh, also you also said that the troops will, or uh, the report which you presented before, said that troops will not be pulled out of the cities, which is one of the major uh, elements of the plan. So if he's not going to abide by uh, all the elements, it means he's not going to abide by the plan. Oh. So again, Assad's regime is trying to gain time. One time they say we accept, another time they say we should discuss the details, another time they disagree with details. So it's only a game they are playing. They are playing while lives is being lost. All right, so let's, uh, let, I don't think let's raise, let's raise a point here with uh, Roman in, in Moscow. And sometimes it's seen as if Moscow and Russia, uh, or rather Russia and China, kind of hold the key to breaking the impasse on this. Can Moscow put more pressure on Syria to sign up and implement this plan? Or is that an exaggeration well, of Moscow's influence on Bashar al-Assad? Well, actually, uh, th there are two questions in one. The, uh, the first question is uh, whether um, Vladimir Putin uh, would want to put some pressure on Assad. And the, uh, the second question is whether Vladimir Putin has some influence on a uh, Syrian uh, leader. And, uh, uh, th there are two different answers on these questions because, well, uh, I think the only one uh, thing that uh, Vladimir Putin can really, uh, w w how can he can really ch change the situation, influence the situation, is um, helping with uh, uh, weapons, and uh, he uh, can either stop it. But uh, uh, as uh, we know, uh, even after meeting with Kofi Annan, um, Russian Ministry of Defense claimed that. Uh, they will continue uh, giving uh, military help, uh, giving uh, weapons to Syria. So uh, he, he may switch this position and uh, he can stop this help. But now it's underway. Uh, and also, uh, as I think that Vladimir Putin can uh, uh, suggest uh, Assad political asylum. Uh, as you know, for example, um, um, previous uh, Kyrgyzian president uh, Askar Akayev uh, was given political asylum in Russia. He is now a professor of mathematics in Moscow University. Maybe Assad also will be professor of medicine in Moscow University. I don't know, but he can be given this opportunity. 
But, right, but uh, let me, let me take you off on a point you mentioned be... there. You, you basically said if the price is right, perhaps Russia might change its position. What would the price be for Moscow to, to make that kind of switch and that kind of offer to Bashar al-Assad? That is an interesting question because uh, actually these negotiations are not uh, very open. We don't know uh, what exactly um, w wants uh, Vladimir Putin for himself. Maybe uh, that can be changing of uh, U uh, USA position on um, um, anti-missile defense. Uh, maybe it will be some uh, ask for change in, uh, of in um, um, American and European attitude to uh, Russian internal um, politics, because as uh, you know, uh, West uh, is uh, toughly cri criticizing uh, uh, Russian problems uh, with democracy. So he has a lot of things to ask from the West. All right, okay, let's um, go to Ilter once again. You know, it's being said by not only Turkish politicians, but I guess you could say at this point, pretty much everybody is saying this is the last chance for Bashar al Assad's regime. If this is the last chance, what comes next if this one doesn't work? Well, I don't know what is meant by last chance, but it is an indication that it is going to be more and more difficult to arrive at some sort of a modus vivendi. All uh, right, what I does Dodonu mean, Turkey's foreign minister, when he says uh, otherwise Syria will be facing strong measures? Like what? Well, uh, I think there is a major concern that the number of uh, people taking refuge in Turkey is so high that uh, some measures will have to be taken to protect these incoming people before they come into Turkey. That's, I think, one of the so things. So are you talking about a buffer that, zone, uh, the uh, idea Turkey's of creating a safe haven, a buffer zone? I'm afraid I did not get your comment. So would you be talking about the idea of creating a buffer zone? Uh, this, this, this is what the Turkish government has been talking about. I'm inclined to think that, of course, the Turkish uh, government will not act alone in this, but will try to mobilize some kind of consensus uh, tomorrow and will probably also try to get the uh, major countries not present at tomorrow's meeting to extend some sort of understanding to measures that may be adopted. Yeah. Okay, uh, that, that, you mentioned a really important point which I'd like to take to Mohammed now, the idea perhaps of taking stronger measures, um, a buffer zone. As Ilter said there, the indications have been Turkey would not like to undertake that alone, which probably means some kind of backing from the UN Security Council. Now, how would that be viewed by the Syrian opposition? The, if we go through the whole... Well, do you have the time for us to go through this whole process again of getting more uh, cover from the UN Security Council? Well, uh, you said something very important. Just the buffer zone is a key word. And, and mark this, a buffer zone would very much help the uh, the regime to fall down and and asset to step aside and more importantly this will cause a defection of thousands and thousands of the military personnel officers uh, normal soldiers and so on until now the uh, syrian people and army and officials are not really believing that the international community is out against bashar al-assad because all what they have seen are words and uh, this would be an action that proves that the international community is really willing to get away with this regime. Now, this buffer zone, as you said, and uh, as the guest from Turkey said, it will not be created by Turkey alone. Turkey cannot do it alone, cannot go alone. Actually, uh, the United Nations Security Council is not needed here. All what you need is the NATO and the United States to agree to that. Because remember, Turkey is a member of NATO. And the borders of Turkey are being threatened, not only by refugees, but also by some elements that are willing to cooperate with the Syrian regime to destabilize Turkey. And I think you know who I'm talking about. Okay, uh, okay many, if I could jump uh, in those, here. While we're talking, of course, about uh, the possibility of Security Council action and now even NATO action, uh, the collapse of the regime. Not everybody is sharing that perspective of what's going on. Now, the leader of Hezbollah, for example, said on Friday that the precondition for President Assad stepping down and his regime collapsing, all that now irrelevant. 
Of course, there are some people who talked about a political solution from the beginning, but put conditions which were equal to overthrowing the regime, like saying that Assad should step down first. I think the political climate now, regionally and internationally, has also surpassed that phase. So when some members of the Syrian opposition, whom we heard today say that the conditions for entering dialogue is Assad stepping down, looks like they are backing down. Today the international and regional situation and even the Arab summit, which was held in Baghdad, has moved beyond this issue. If it does come to a point of trying to get cover from the Security Council or perhaps even unilateral action uh, by NATO, as Mohammed is suggesting, I'd like to ask Roman in Moscow, would Russia this time be more supportive or, or at least perhaps less um, against such action? Well, uh, Russia, of course, will be strongly against any unil unilateral NATO activity in this region. Uh, because, um, of course, Vladimir Putin wants to have uh, his voice in decision-making process, and that means that he will support only uh, those actions which will be provided by United Nations, where Russia has veto, uh, right to veto. So uh, I think that um, uh, when they uh, are now saying about a peaceful solution of the problem, they mean a peaceful solution inside the Security um, Council. Um, UN right. Security Council, right, yeah, because Mohammed that is, is, that is the place where can they bargain. Let me try and bring him in. You disagree with that. Why, Mohammed? Well, because he says unilateral. What is unilateral? Now the well, uh, United Nations General Assembly. Well, action outside of probably the Security Assembly. Council. Let, I think let, he let me it, say this, please. You know, look, look, the United Nations General Assembly, 137 countries uh, condemned this regime for the atrocities it is committing. Now, this is not unilateral. The Friends of Syria uh, are going to meet tomorrow. Everybody has been calling on this regime to stop the massacres. Would Turkey support unilateral action and Turkey of course playing a role in NATO playing a role indeed in creating those buffer zones if they do come into existence well Turkey would not like to engage in unilateral action but let me remind our uh, Russian uh, friend from Moscow that in, uh, in staging quote-unquote interventions of an humanitarian nature in uh, South Ossetia and uh, also in Circassian part of or Abkhazian part of Georgia, uh, it was not my impression that the Russian Federation was uh, first interested in getting UN approval. So apparently, uh, in at least the Russian way of thinking, there are occasions when the humanitarian causes are so important that uh, international legality may not be the first consideration. Uh, the, now, I am not necessarily suggesting that this be uh, imitated by others, uh, but I am uh, saying that uh, if the uh, cost of human lives get to be unbearable, I think uh, the international community must uh, recognize that the immediately affected countries have more of a uh, role in uh, shaping what happens. All right, but if we do, since we're talking about a buffer zone, how far would Turkey go in cooperating with those sorts of plans if some countries wanted to use it to, for example, arm the opposition? Uh, the buffer zones will inevitably be established, uh, hopefully by securing international cooperation, and their sole uh, purpose will be to extend protection to incoming people and nothing more. All right, I'd like to take that point to Mohammed. Would you be happy with a buffer zone yes. like that? Well, I am saying that Again. the buffer zone is the least costly, uh, costly uh, solution and uh, which uh, avoids uh, military intervention in Syria. Because I said there are so many soldiers in thousands who don't want to participate in killing their fellow citizens, and they don't have anywhere to go. So they are either uh, obliged to shoot their fellow citizens or be shot themselves. So a buffer zone would, would enable them to go there. Uh, remember again that there are so many civilians that would like to go somewhere to, to be protected from this regime, and they have nowhere to go. Uh, of course, we thank the Tur Turkey for uh, uh, harboring them, but of course, if they have a buffer zone in Syria, it would be much better. Uh, they would be able to lead normal lives because such a buffer zone might include one of the major cities in Syria, and and that is very important, as I said. All right, I'd like to take this question to Roman in Moscow. 
even if a buffer zone isn't created, even if the opposition isn't armed, how do you see Kremlin's vision on the future of the regime in Syria? Do they think it can last? Well, uh, of course, I cannot uh, get uh, inside the brain of Vladimir Putin, but I think it's uh, evident now for everybody that uh, Bashar Assad cannot uh, stay in power for a very long time now. You know, civil war is like a toothpaste. It's very easy to get it out, but it's impossible to get it back inside. And um, I think that the question is uh, um, how exactly Bashar um, um, Assad can step down. Will it be some negotiation process or will it be like in Libya, uh, very, uh, you know, um, uh, armed and uh, cruel uh, uh, resolution of the conflict? And um, uh, I think that uh, for Russia, uh, the most important is uh, to uh, play its um, own role uh, in um, negotiations, to have the uh, voice in uh, the process of negotiations, to, to, to have some benefits from this uh, bargain with the United States considering uh, the resolution of the conflict. So um, they just want to be insiders not outsiders of the process. Okay, and they don't but, care but if that is the conclusion that Moscow seems to be reaching, along with others around the world, that this regime is not going to last anyway, how much of a dialogue is there going on to talk about what the next regime could look like, how to set it up? Are we there yet? Well, um, I think um, uh, unlike uh, Western countries, for... Um, uh, Vladimir Putin, uh, it is not uh, very important, uh, uh, the process of uh, uh, democratization of Syria, and uh, th that is not very important that the new regime would re represent all the interests inside uh, Syria. You know, I would rather believe in Santa Claus than in Putin's democratic values. But he, of course, uh, would like to have the regime who will buy uh, Russian weapons. And in that case, um, maybe he will... Uh, um, he will try to switch his position to, uh, to keep good uh, relations with the new Syrian power. So, of course, he wouldn't support Bashar Assad till the very end. It will be just uh, not, um, not very clever in the sense of uh, uh, having good relations with the new uh, Syrian power. Let me turn to Mohammed in Istanbul. The focus seems to be, so far from what we uh, are hearing, despite all the talk on this show about buffer zones and unilateral action, the talk seems to be on the diplomatic front, listening to what the Saudi foreign minister has been saying alongside the U.S. Secretary of State, that their focus is on finding a mechanism to implement Kofi Annan's plan. Are you worried about that? Well, we are not worried about any diplomatic solution. What we are worried about is, 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 is about the lives that are being wasted uh, in this time that a diplomatic solution is sought. Uh, in fact, we don't believe any diplomatic solution will, will, will right, solve this. Right, but at the same the, time, the, the Mohammed, day. let me ask you, with the army securing town after town, how long have you got before people won't be able to even come out and protest, let alone be able to uh, organize any uh, armed movement or, or do anything with any arms or any buffer zone that might be set up for them? I'm sorry to contradict you. The army is not securing towns. The, what the army is doing is shelling civilians and trying to uh, get the Syrian free, uh, free okay, Syrian let, let's army call it out. controlling as soon, the towns. As soon as soon as soon as the regular army goes out, the Free Syrian Army is going back to these cities. If not coming back, they are working, operating somewhere else. So it's it's an un unending story. Uh, the, the the regular army fights the, the 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 Free Syrian Army, but then the Free Syrian Army goes and attacks the barracks which are barricaded in the cities. So it's uh, it's continuing. And this regime has, from the very beginning, has been saying, after two weeks we will finish it. After two weeks, we'll finish it. And then repeating that for one year now. When are we going to reach the point that we know that this is not going to end? We should know that this revolution will not finish until this regime goes away, with, uh, until Assad steps down. Uh, this is the, the, the final thing. Uh, and now, uh, another thing I would, I would like to mention to you that came in your report also, that uh, uh, in connection to this, that the speaker or the sp spokesman of the foreign ministry said that uh, the, the job is finished. Now, I hope that we will remember that, because after a week or two, they will come out and contradict themselves. Now, my Call. My, what I'm going to say about uh, the best, best solution for this problem is that 
you know, the longer we wait, the worse uh, and the more uh, cost we have to pay to end this problem. Now, the refugees are becoming more and more, as you uh, rightly said. Uh, the the okay. problems are going to, more, to okay. be more, Understood, and perhaps sir. more infiltrators could... will be working in Syria. All right, we'll have to thank our guests at this point. From Istanbul, Ilta Turan. From Moscow, Roman Dobrokhotov. Also in Istanbul, Mohammed Bassam Emadi. And thank you very much for watching. If you want to catch the show again online, just head over to our website, aljazeera.com. Until next time.